Hey, it's Coach Maria. Good morning. I'm going to be doing some stretches today. So I already warmed up my body. So if you're not warmed up yet, go on ahead and pause. Do your side to sides. And, you know, get a, a good 30, 40, 50 <laughs> in and, and warm up. Warm up your body from the neck down. Get yourself feeling good. You always want to warm up before you stretch. So I'm going to do my, my stretch routine real quick. I'm not going to hold my stretches as long as I normally do, which is for a full 60 seconds. So I can get a maximum stretch and go deeper. But um, this is just as um, an example of what it is that I like to do in the morning. And again, I always do my warm up first before I do my stretches because it's very important. You don't want to hurt yourself, okay? You don't want to hurt yourself. How far back can you go? Huh? How far back? I've been doing this for many years, so. Oh. My lower back loves that. <laughs> My lower back loves that. Oh, I love to stretch everything. Oh, that way, I feel great all day long. All the stiffness is gone. All the kinks have been worked out. Oh, I love the way that feels. <laughs> All right. I like to do this for my, my little guy. I usually do about 30 of these. Oh, yeah, nice little pop. Then I like to yes. Oh yeah. Holding these stretches a lot longer typically. Oh, stretch those hips out. Especially if you sit a lot. So I'm gonna have to deal with the mat, right? I put this my my left foot in front of me like this, stretch out, and then go down, stretching all this out. I learned this stretch in Taekwondo, and um, I used to be really tight in here where it hurt because of just standing all day as a hairdresser. My glutes would get super tight. My massage therapist told me that's where I held my stress. <laughs> and I believe her. <laughs> oh, so once I learned this stress, this, this stretch, and um, I just felt better, and I was like, I will do this stretch forever. <laughs> I usually hold that for about 60 seconds. I put Journey Girl outside because there's just no way I was going to get through my stretching routine with her. She would have been all on top of me and under me. And, and 
Now I get 20 in. All right, stretch back those hamstrings. Give them a really good stretch. And then I come down. Go on to the other side. Let's go. <laughs> this is no fun on this mat. <laughs> Much rather be on the carpet, no shoes on. So much easier. Get your split in. Not bad for 57, huh? 56, not 57 yet. All right. still in the picture. Oh yeah, I am good. All right. Do you have a favorite TV show that you watch at night? You could just get on the floor and do your stretches in the evening. So that you can go to bed nice and stretched out and tension free you will sleep better. You will sleep so much better. And then I do the downward dog and everything again. I pump out some push-ups, And then that's the end of my, my exercise routine in the morning. So let's go. Let's go, let's go. Grab your, your planner so that you run your day and your day doesn't run you, all right? So you did a brain dump last night, right? If you've been watching me for any amount of time, you know that you just gotta start writing stuff down, man. To write, draw a graph whatever you need to do, <laughs> just dump, just dump, make a list, scribble diagonally in, in different colors and draw some hearts and then write your emotions in each heart. That sounds like fun, right? <laughs> and then in the morning, you grab your, your um, planner, you write down your lists for everything that you dumped and then you put everything on assignment. Put it all on assignment. And that way you know what's going on, who, what, when, where, how. You don't overbook yourself. You don't make commitments you can't keep. Um, so you definitely want to plan so that you run your day and your day doesn't run you and oh, so other people don't run you and run your day. Let's go, let's go. All right, it's time for another tip. What am I gonna do today? Let's find a tip for you. Hold on, go ahead, plan your day, plan your day. I'll be back. Hmm. I'm back. Did your day plan? Did you get it in? Hmm. Hold on. Mm -hmm. 
I saw this video on YouTube and I'm obsessed with this recipe. I don't even like using that word obsessed. I think it's overused, but I just said it. My daughter loves them. I mod modified it a little bit for my specific taste. Crazy, crazy good snack. This in a saucepan or, you know, yeah, yeah, in a saucepan. You want to put peanut butter. Um, I would say like two cups of peanut butter. Turn your light on low. You want to add some honey. I think they did like a whole cup of honey. That's too sweet for me. Um, I might have put a quarter cup in, but the honey actually helps to hold it together. So I'll probably put a little bit more than a quarter of a cup. But when I made the recipe the first time, it was way too sweet. So I modified. And then you add oatmeal. <clears throat> so you got this nice thick, you know, consistency, right? So good. Now I modified it. <laughs> by adding some cayenne pepper. I gave it a little spicy kick, it's delicious. You spread the mixture on a cookie sheet and I stick it in the freezer overnight or just for a few hours, doesn't take long. And then I uh, melt some dark chocolate, semi-sweet dark chocolate, and I spread it on top. And then I cut it into bars and I take these, one of these wherever I go. My daughter loves them. I love them. I'm, I'm so tempted to eat it. <laughs> it's so good, y'all. All right. That's a healthy snack. This is a no-brainer right here. This is a boiled egg. What's that blue line? I like to boil about eight eggs. And then I, I mark them so that way we don't mistakenly, you know, try to crack it and, and fry it. <laughs> so I mark them. This is the perfect protein bar. No preservatives, no additives, no fat, no sugar. Just pr protein, just protein. And it costs way less than any protein bar. What I see people paying for one or two protein bars will get them a whole dozen of eggs. Even though eggs are expensive, they're not as expensive as a protein bar. They're great dog snacks. Crack it open, cut it up throw it in their bowl or do like my husband does and just throw your dog the whole egg. <laughs> yeah. Journey's favorite snack, boiled eggs. I love to have them in the refrigerator. I love to peel them and take them with me in a container. And if I just need a little something, I just, I just eat an, a boiled egg y'all with a little bit of Himalayan pink, pink salt, cayenne pepper. Let's go. Let's go. All right. Healthy tips right there. Make your own granola bars, oatmeal bars for you and your kids. They're so good. And get them hooked on boiled eggs if they want a snack real quick. Eat a piece of fruit and a boiled egg. Eat a handful of nuts and a boiled egg. Let's go. Let's go. Save your money. Save your health. All right. <laughs> Devotion time. Let's go. Let's go. So I had to take another bite. <laughs> mm. Those bars are so good. All right, today's devotion is on finances. Um, how to be grateful for your life. Finances in the U version Bible app. Download it today. Did you know that the Bible talks about money, <laughs> possessions, and accumulating wealth in over 2,000 verses? In fact, 11 of the 39 parables Jesus taught are about that very subject. It's probably safe to say that God knew that there would be a temptation and tendency to handle money poorly. Sadly, we do love and adore money more than we should. We often wish we had more and we think that a possession or amount of money will bring lasting gratitude when in reality, it's just a temporary fix that will soon need to be satisfied once again. James 1, 17 tells us that 
Our God is the giver of every good and perfect gift. And if we'll apply this, our mindset will change when it comes to our finances. Let's consider these tips when it comes to growing our gratitude in this area. Where you live. Whether our home is big or small, excuse me, <clears throat> I'm going to pause. I'm back. Where you live. Whether our home is big or small, most of us have a place to live. Thank God for the gift of a place to live regardless of size or style. What you possess. Many of us have clothes that we don't wear and have the ability to stream music or read books on a device that allows us to get any information we can find. But we still want what we don't have. Take some time to re reset, reset your mind and thank God for the provision to have what you own at your fingertips. If you have the ability to get clean water at the turn of a faucet or buy food from a grocery store, then you are more blessed than most of the world. Thank God for the gift of these conveniences. No matter how much money we make, it's wise to see our income as a gift. Chances are there are more people in the world who might think the lives we live are amazing. Keeping our lives free from the love of money, the love of money, will help us be more satisfied. We do this by using money. We do this by using money, not loving it. At the root of our desire to gain more money or possessions is a misunderstanding of what we truly need. Philippians 4.19 says, And my God will meet all your needs according to your riches of his glory in Christ Jesus. God cares too much about us to give us everything we want, but loves us immensely and will meet our needs. Thank you, Father God, for meeting our needs. And thank you even more for not giving us every little thing we want. <laughs> thank you for your wisdom, your provision, your kindness. We thank you, Father. We are so grateful for all that you do for us. We give you all honor and glory and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs> Have a fantastic day. Keep moving your body. Pay attention to what you put in your mouth. Stay in the Word. Get your YouVersion app. Run your day. Don't let it run you. And don't let other people run you either. All right? Like and subscribe. Share. And I'll see you on the next one. Bye.